My name is Daniel Lynch, and in this video I will present our paper entitled The Soft Landing Problem, Minimizing Energy Loss by a Legged Robot Impacting Yielding Terrain, which was recently published in the IEEE Robotics and Automation Letters. My co-authors are Kevin Lynch, to whom I am not related, and Paul Lumbenhauer. We belong to Northwestern University's Center for Robotics and Biosystems and to the Department of Mechanical Engineering. I'd like to acknowledge support from NASA and the National Science Foundation. Many uses for mobile robots, from disaster response to extraterrestrial exploration, require locomotion over yielding terrain, such as sand, soil, and other regolith. Robotic traversal of these soft substrates is challenging. In 2010, NASA's Spirit Mars rover sunk into a sand dune with no hope of escape when its wheels broke through a crust of stiffer material on the dune's surface. The 2015 DARPA Robotics Challenge demonstrated the potential of humanoid robots for disaster response, but also produced plenty of footage of robots toppling over when trying to walk across sand that was only one inch deep. Conversely, nature abounds with animals, including humans, that traverse soft substrates with relative ease and low metabolic cost, despite motor control rates that are much lower than those of their robotic counterparts. In this video, we formulate and solve the soft landing problem, seeking control policies that minimize foot penetration depth for a legged robot coming to rest after impacting yielding terrain. This is motivated by the desire to minimize energy loss to permanent ground deformation underfoot. In the interest of tractability, we restrict our analysis of the soft landing problem to purely vertical motion. These two video clips demonstrate how control can be used to reduce penetration depth for a vertically constrained impactor. A high impedance controller, shown on the left, results in greater foot penetration depth than a low impedance controller, shown on the right. As you just saw, our robot is intentionally simple, consisting of a body and a foot constrained to move vertically and separated by an actuator, which we model as an ideal force source with upper and lower bounds. The robot also has a stroke limit, which means the separation between the body and the foot is bounded above and below. Our terrain model is also intentionally quite simple. We approximate the ground as a one-way spring that can yield or remain stationary, depending on the applied force, but which cannot return to its original state. Although there exist more sophisticated models, the one-way spring model is accurate to first order, generalizes to a variety of soft substrates, and captures the hybrid nature of yielding terrain, making it suitable for analytical approaches to the soft landing problem. Lastly, we assume that at the time of impact, the robot is between stroke limits and the body and foot are moving at the same speed. Combining our models of the robot and the ground reaction force, we get the model shown on the right, which involves six parameters. Of these six parameters, five are specific to the robot and the terrain on which it is moving. The sixth is gravity. To ensure that our results are generalizable, we non-dimensionalize our model by introducing three scaling factors that span the fundamental dimensions of a mechanical system, which are distance, time, and mass. The resulting non-dimensionalized model is shown on the right. It only depends on three parameters, the mass ratio, the dimensionless stroke limit, and the dimensionless impact velocity. One noteworthy consequence of our choice of non-dimensionalization is that the minimum depth required to support the weight of the robot at rest is now simply 1 and represents the least possible foot penetration depth for our model. To obtain an open-loop force control policy that minimizes foot penetration depth, we formulate the soft landing problem as a constrained optimal control problem, where we want to minimize dimensionless foot penetration depth, subject to dynamics, control bounds, stroke limits, and the constraint that the foot stops at a depth that will support whatever force is required to bring the body to rest. We analyze this problem with Pontryagin's maximum principle to gain insight into the structure of penetration minimizing control policies. In particular, the control Hamiltonian H is linear in the control U, and that, together with the free time nature of this problem, means that bang-bang controls are optimal until the foot stops. These conditions remain true for any control-affine stance phase dynamics, including types of terrain for which the ground reaction force is not simply linear with depth and which can include rate-dependent effects. We assume one switching event during the bang-bang phase. Once the foot stops, the body arresting force is constant and is a function of the body velocity and the remaining stroke at the end of the bang-bang phase. The body arresting force must not pull the foot off the ground, nor may it push the foot further into the ground. The result is a three-phase open-loop force control policy, in which the robot stomps its foot down to the minimum depth required to support the body arresting force. If the foot underpenetrates, the ground will not support the body arresting force, and when the ground yields, the foot will sink deeper than necessary. On the other hand, if the foot overpenetrates, the ground will support more force than the minimum required body arresting force, which is again suboptimal. An example soft landing trajectory that uses this three-phase force control policy is shown on the left. The mass ratio, stroke limit, and control bounds correspond to our experimental apparatus, which I'll discuss soon. In the first segment of this control policy, the robot drives the foot into the ground. 
In the second segment, the robot pulls up on the foot to stop it at just the right depth. This is the minimum depth required to support the body arresting force, which is then applied in the third segment of this control policy. As shown on the right, Bang Bang solutions to the soft landing problem reduce penetration depth by at least a factor of 2 compared to a rigid impactor. As impact velocity approaches 0, the optimal force control policy recovers the best case dimensionless penetration depth of 1, equivalent to the weight support depth. While the open loop three phase force control policy represents a theoretical optimum, its inherent force discontinuities make implementation problematic because they require high bandwidth and result in high sensitivity to uncertainty in model parameters and sensor measurements. On the other hand, there are biological precedents for impedance control in the form of muscles, tendons, and ligaments, along with examples of active impedance control in locomoting animals. Also, impedance can be implemented mechanically with springs or dampers, or virtually through feedback control. Regardless of implementation, we'd like to figure out how impedance control compares to our optimal open-loop force control policy in terms of minimizing foot penetration depth. We numerically explore the stiffness damping plane, simulating impacts for a range of values of the dimensionless impact velocity, the mass ratio, and the dimensionless stroke limit. For each set of dimensionless parameter values, we record the simulated foot penetration depth and discard any simulations that violate the stroke limit. The color maps on the left show how the optimal impedance, represented by a star, changes as impact velocity grows, for a mass ratio and dimensionless stroke limit that correspond to our experimental apparatus. Notice that the optimal impedance lives on the edge of the colored region, indicating that the robot uses its entire available stroke to minimize foot penetration depth. As the body grows increasingly heavier than the foot, the optimal stiffness grows more slowly with impact velocity, and the optimal damping increases. As the stroke limit increases, the optimal stiffness again grows more slowly with impact velocity, as does the optimal damping. These results suggest that impedance control can best transfer momentum from the foot to the body when the mass ratio and stroke limit are both large. In other words, robots designed to walk and run on soft ground should have long legs and light feet in order to minimize foot penetration depth. Having explored the stiffness damping plane for a range of impact velocities, mass ratios, and stroke limits, we now compare optimal impedance control to the optimal open-loop force control policy derived earlier. It appears that optimal impedance control reduces foot penetration depth nearly as well as the optimal control policy suggested by Pontryagin's maximum principle, while being easier to implement on hardware and remaining robust to uncertainty. At low impact velocities, penetration depths near the minimum weight-bearing depth are achievable. At high impact velocities, penetration depth grows linearly but more slowly than for a rigid impactor. This dependence on impact velocity suggests that impedance on real-world robots needs to account for the desired gait as well as the ground stiffness. To validate the optimal impedance trends observed in simulation, we performed experiments in which a two-mass vertically constrained impedance-controlled robot was dropped into a prepared bed of granular media. Our experimental apparatus consists of three systems. First, our fluidized bed trackway consists of a bed of poppy seeds and a blower that forces air through a porous membrane diffuser. Fluidization between experiments ensures repeatable and homogeneous ground conditions. The second part of our experimental apparatus is a vertically constrained hopping robot with mass ratio 5 and dimensionless stroke limit 20. The robot is built around a linear brushless DC motor that renders viscoelastic forces through the use of a PD controller running at 2 kHz. This enables us to dial in a wide range of impedances, as shown by these two video clips. High impedance on the left, low impedance on the right. The third part of our experimental apparatus is a lifting mechanism that hoists the robot along a vertical guide rail to control the impact velocity for each experiment. We performed five impact experiments for each of three stiffness values, three impact velocities, and 10 to 15 damping values, for a total of more than 500 impact experiments. The non-dimensionalized data from these experiments reflect the trends observed in simulation, although there are discrepancies which we attribute to unmodeled nonlinearities in the apparatus, such as friction and cogging in the robot's motor, as well as higher-order ground reaction effects such as inertial drag. Nevertheless, the experimental results confirm the impact velocity dependence of the optimal impedance on a real example of yielding terrain. To recap, we examined two approaches to the soft landing problem. We learned that the depth-minimizing control policy is bang-bang force control. We also learned that optimal impedance control performs nearly as well as the theoretically optimal bang-bang force control policy. Due to impedance control's relative ease of implementation, we were able to perform a systematic granular impact study that confirmed the optimal impedance trends we observed in simulation. These trends suggest that robots designed to walk and run on soft ground should have long legs and light feet, and that impedance must account for the desired gait. Thank you for watching. I am happy to answer questions and discuss further using the email address provided on this slide.